Hello and welcome to Blytheway Business News. Uh, today we're joined by friends of ours from Amur Minerals who've been on the show many times, but today we've got a new face. Uh, Adam Habib has just joined the company as a senior board advisor. Uh, Adam, you joined the company in February. Would you mind giving the viewers a quick overview of the company and then an interpretation of, of your role with Amur, please? Sure, Tim. Thanks very much for uh, taking the time to, uh, to spend talking to me and to giving me this chance to speak to our investors. Um, so I was hired uh, in February, but actually I've been talking to the board for about six months before that. And we had been discussing uh, the issues around how to take Amor forward, what was the best route to market, and what were the key stages and we wanted to make sure that basically the board and I were on the same page and all agreed with the steps required to develop this, you know, grade A nickel sulfide mine and deliver it to market. And that was really the role. So my role is to help them get this asset across the line and into production as soon as possible. And that's basically my role. And we're talking about the, the Kuhn Marnie nickel copper project in, in in the eastern side of russia i mean you're in the right commodities absolutely you know copper and nickel absolutely essential for this boom in electric vehicles but you know, your project is potentially of global significance is, is that right well i mean certainly it's a strategic size asset uh, and that's because of the amount of nickel that's been discovered and uh, the scale of the, the mine itself. Now that comes with its own problems because obviously you then need significant infrastructure which impacts your capital requirements to deliver this project into reality. And these are the challenges that the board have been grappling with and trying to figure out exactly how they get from where they are today to the mine being in production. So that's why I've joined, that's what I'm looking at. And yes, this is a significant nickel asset, but that raises challenges as well. It's just not just because it's that big doesn't mean it's really easy. <laughs> oh, nickel. I mean, I, there was a quote a couple of years ago from uh, Elon Musk of Tesla, who was talking about the various metals which go into a battery. And I remember him saying that nickel was the icing on the cake. And if you'd got that, you were really in a great place. Now, you've recently provided an update on the potential for saleable copper from Kunmani. I mean, how does that further enhance the project? Well, I mean, I, th I think um, if we go through the steps that are required to bring the project to market, I think that's really important. I'll, then I'll come back to that particular question. So um, the key steps are first to complete the TEO, which is a Russian feasibility study, which is a limited study, but a requirement for us to keep our license. So if we didn't do it, we'd lose our license. Um, that has to be completed, and that's due to be completed by the beginning of December, and we're on track. And as part of that, we had our friends in Russia go through the metal blocks that we're mining and, and the drill cores and figure out exactly what could be derived in terms of payable products. And they came up with two payable products, a nickel concentrate and a copper concentrate. And what that means, which we'll obviously refine and, and the data needs to be worked on between now and December, but it means that we get a greater amount of value out of the rock that we produce. So our net present value should be greater now, once we know the numbers in December, than it was prior to us having this differentiated two uh, concentrate product, which is a copper concentrate and a nickel concentrate, which comes with quite a few different precious metals, which will enable us to obviously make those payable as well and increase our revenue. So, so, so it's, a, it's a big step for us to get this work done. Sure. So the, the TEO, which might not be that familiar to uh, business news viewers, as I understand it, is a Russian requirement. But then to bring it back into, let's call it Western terminology, is a vital step as you move towards the bankable feasibility study. So Correct. What, what are the next steps moving towards the BFS? So um, the next steps are, are really twofold. We know that um, the company has taken a long time to get here. We know our stakeholders have been very patient and biding with us. And recently, they were even more patient and they voted in favor of 
of us to continue to have the ability to issue stock and raise money. So there are two or three key steps. One, we must find a revenue source with the capital that we have. So we must make sure that we stop diluting our shareholders constantly. And therefore, we've been looking at investing in near production or producing assets. And that'll give us a stable cash flow to enable the business to function and cover its working costs. In addition to that, before we complete the TEO, we hope to sign a binding offtake agreement with a world-class player. Once we have that binding agreement signed, we'll be able to raise some money to service the requirement of the banking feasibility study, so the full European study, which we'll then complete within 12 to 18 months after that point. So, we, so it's going to be a really busy year. We've got a lot going on. We've got to get a transaction across the line so that we get some revenue. We've got to get um, this fundraising, the offtake, and obviously the completion of the TO. So we've got a lot going on. It's a very, very active time for us. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the, um, the offtake uh, arrangements because uh, there have been some quite recent developments in terms of the offtake. Is there any, any more detail you can give us? On the off-take. Now, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to tell you more than uh, than we've already put out on the on the RNS. So we have a non-binding uh, offtake agreement in place right now. It has uh, payability on several metals and on both our copper concentrate and our nickel concentrate. Um, the guys are working very hard to produce a, an update on those numbers, and we hope to get that out to the market shortly. And other than the developments at Kunmani. Um, anything else that um, we should be looking out for uh, in the coming months uh, from Amur over the next few months? Yeah, I mean, so, so certainly, obviously, I've, I've been incredibly busy since I've joined. Um, and we've looked at quite a few different opportunities because obviously, uh, even though COVID-19 has been a challenge uh, for all of us, um, there are obviously opportunities that kick up through this process because some companies get strained, they get short of capital, and they might have really fantastic projects, but you know, just a little bit of capital could help them get across the line and get into production. And if we can find you know, one, two, maybe three of these opportunities and execute these in the short future, you know, we'll then have a really stable base because we won't just have this fantastic nickel asset, we'll hopefully have a fantastic other asset as well, or two. And if we manage to do that, we get revenue very quickly from those other assets, um, it'll be really supportive for our uh, company and, you know, cash flow is king. So having cash flow is really important to look after our stakeholders. That was uh, Adam Habib from Amur Minerals. Amur trades on the AIM market in London, currently has a market capitalization of only £15.6 million sterling. As we heard from Adam there, the company is moving towards projects which could see short-term revenue, and they're making very good progress towards that BFS on the enormous copper-nickel project in Russia. That's all from Blytheway Business News. Thank you for joining us.